For some who live in an urban environment, we tend to look away from our immediate surroundings to feed our hunger for exploration and discovery of new experiences. Given the world's recent events, many of us have had to look a little closer to home to satisfy our urge for exploration and to create new memories that will last a lifetime. Having to look in our own backyards for a new and exciting adventure can be a daunting task, as we've grown accustomed to the same people, places, sights, and sounds that greet us every day when we step out of our front doors. I challenge you, right now, to take a step outside and with an open mind and an extra sense of curiosity, find something within the ordinary that's extraordinary. For me, I have my sights on this drainage pipe. This one, I think, holds something extraordinary behind it. And when I stepped outside my front door today, I challenged myself to see where this drainage pipe leads and what kind of fish I can catch. Pretty decent. Oh my gosh. There we go. Nice freshwater snook. Take it easy, boy. Because Eric's gotcha. Woo. Check it out. Nice freshwater common snook right here, guys. They're so strong. You guys know. Look at that, amazing. I heard them busting under the bridge. So, hey, that's why I've got a swim bait tied on. He went after it. All right, let's release him and uh, let's get to doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay, bud. I can't even get him in the water. He's holding on. That's what they do. Woo, he's pinching hard whenever you're ready. Awesome. The video has not even started yet and we kicked it off with a banger. Fresh water snook. Oh my gosh. I, guys, I'm gonna lay it all out here right now. We're going after snakehead in this video. There's a little backwater canal right here. That's our primary target and that was a bonus. That was the best bycatch anyone could absolutely ask for and they're still busting under this bridge let's see if we can catch another one and we'll we'll get into what we're supposed to be doing oh, no. come on baby what you got they're keying in on tiny little bait fish oh i gotta get under here a little bit more Oh my lord. All right, back to our regularly scheduled program. Get out of there. Oh, big head shakes. Oh, we're in grass now. We still got him. We still got him. <laughs> and that is why we came to this spot. All right, three seven. All right, nice three pound snakehead, a little over. This is what we came here for. 
this crazy less than obvious spot has got these and obviously it also has some snook as you saw earlier but this is what we're after some of this just backwater out of the way i don't even know what you want to call this but getting out here exploring these waters for the first time and it's definitely paid off all it takes is a little bit of research i know that this body of water connects to where i've caught snakeheads before and i figure why not just check out a cool interesting place may or may not have been fished before i mean it's a little bit of a mission to get in here but that's what makes this all worth it not a big one by any means but hopefully we'll get a much larger one so let's get them back and uh, see if we can get on some more i think you're ready here he goes so i'm hiding under the snook bridge right now i came down current at the opposite side of the bridge that i was just previously fishing on and i'm going to cast up current and see if we can get hooked up make a cast ride this out and then get back to fishing for those snakeheads. Instant. It's a tarpon guys. It's a tarpon. It's a tarpon. It's a tarpon. Nope, it's a snook. Oh, there was a tarpon. Guys, a tarpon and a snook were battling for my bait. Okay. 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 That was my fault. That was my fault. This is a bass, I think. It's a it's a big bass. It's a big bass. Oh my gosh. It's not that big, guys, but it's a nice bass. Holy cow. Whoa, calm down. Okay, so this right here is a, definitely a spawned out female, but something like this is actually a common occurrence when you're fishing for snakeheads and in any body of water. I mean, they these guys coexist in these bodies of water. And I mean, of course, if the rumors were true, you would not be catching bass of this quality. Definitely spawned out. So let's get a weight on it and we'll put her back really, really quickly. Okay, we're on zero. Just calm down for me, girl. Hey, hey. 311, that's a good number. All right, sweetie pie. go oh, oh 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 there's one there's one there's one it's... you guys this is ridiculous Oh man, Woo. he was just sitting right up there in the grass. I tried plopping my frog right in front of it and it kind of knew, it sensed something was there, but it spooked. Man, all right. <laughs> all right, we're still seeing them. They're really tucked up underneath this vegetation. I do have kind of like a flipping and pitching setup. Oh, oh, it just shot right past me too. That was crazy. So. I have a flipping and pitching setup that I could, you know, flip these little holes in this vegetation and do a little bit of punching, but it's real difficult to do that in the kayak and I'm just trying to cover as much water as possible. So that's why I'm sticking with the frog for now. And I might resort to flipping and pitching if it really gets a little too difficult or I'm not getting that many bites.
Get out. Get out. Okay. Uh-oh. 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 Hey, we're going to lose him. We're going to lose him. We're going to lose him unless I get him in the net. <sighs> Woo! <laughs> He's hooked on the outside of the jaw. All right. Having camera issues. Oh, and snakehead issues. He's real green. But there he is. <laughs> 3.5. Not uh, a huge snake by any means. We can definitely do better. We'll get him back in the water before he just, he, I'm gonna lose my scale with this guy. All right, buddy, get out of here. There he goes, kicked off, nice and strong. They destroy everything when they're like that. Usually the bigger ones will kind of calm down for you. That was awesome fight. We hooked them on the outside of the chin. As soon as he did his first death roll, I thought he was, I thought that was it. He was coming off, but he actually wrapped himself around the line and dug the hooks in a little bit deeper. So we got really, really lucky. I must admit, this is actually a big surprise. I cannot believe how much life is in this ecosystem, this little tiny canal thing it's just like it's just water runoff basically but it's deep enough to where i could get the kayak in and if i can put the kayak in it you bet snakeheads are going to be in it but i'm also seeing peacock bass there's mullet like 12 inch mullet uh, of course i caught that big large mouth as well just absolutely what a pleasant surprise this is such a beautiful little ecosystem the water is super beautiful there it's basically clear because of all this vegetation that's in it it's just amazing and supports such a healthy, strong population of fish. And obviously there's iguanas <laughs> roaming the bank. It's absolutely amazing. Got one. Nice one. Oh, it's a nice one. It's a nice one, guys. <laughs> it, it rolled out of the... It rolled out of the net. It rolled out of the net. I can't get him. Come on. Come on. Got him. I got him. Woo. <sighs> guys, I'm soaked. Wow. Nice fish, guys. Nice fish. I got to see if I can post up somewhere so we can deal with this. Oh, yeah. This one's nice and thick. Hopefully, I can get a weight and show you guys without it tearing the kayak apart. All right, you know this is going to give me tons of problems because they have locked jaw. Maybe, just maybe. Ooh, oh my God. Damn it. I'm going to get a false reading. Let's try that again. Does that say zero? Yeah, it says zero. Try that one more time. So one thing I don't like about the gambler scale is it. That's a nice fish, guys. That's not as heavy as I thought it was gonna be, but still, 415, it's a pretty solid snakehead right there. Once you get into the five pound mark, that was awesome. You gonna cooperate? I know what the answer is, no. All right, I'm gonna try, this fish is really, really green, flared out. There it is, look at that, beautiful fish tail's a little beat up i don't know it doesn't have any spawning colors in it no blues could have been from the fight but what a gorgeous fish all right let's give it a release because uh i can feel it it's tensing up all right so what i'm gonna do is wait for the snakehead to take a sip of air and then i'll dip the net and allow it to swim away so i know it's got a fresh breath and it's going to be strong enough to swim away get to the bank and post up and recover from the fight That was such an awesome fight. I saw the fish come out of the cover with its mouth open. I could see the white of its mouth before it even took the frog. That fish was ready to eat. There was no doubt it was gonna bite. If you look in front of me, this is a prime example of this habitat that these snakeheads are living in. So right to, the, to our left, we have the canal and then these floating mats that go all the way up to the bank over here. And they just lay underneath all that and wait in ambush for any anything really to come 
across its nose. I mean, really, they feed a lot on lizards and little mice and rats and, and crustaceans and bugs and whatnot, but they definitely do feed on fish, but tiny, tiny little bait fish like you see swimming around right here. I've eaten a few snakehead in my time, and I gotta tell you, not one single snakehead had a bass or a peacock bass in its belly. I've seen a few with some bluegill, a lot of mine cichlid, and a lot of those little tiny like zebra looking tilapia, but natives, few and far between. And that, that's not to say that they don't eat them, but it's very, very rare for the ones that I've dissected and inspected the stomach. torpedoed it. He ate right in that hole, but there was just too much vegetation. He couldn't get a hold of the frog all the way. Wow. <laughs> Did you guys hear him clap that? That was insane. Oh my gosh. I didn't have any slack in the line. He grabbed it when the line was completely taut and the rod was basically pointed at it. That was awesome. Man, Whew. that's snakehead fishing for you. It is about seven o'clock. So I've got about 45 minutes left of usable light. So we got to make our way back to the car and uh, hopefully we can pick up a fish or two on the way back, but I got a boogie. So I'm not going to be picking it apart as well as I did, but hopefully, fingers crossed guys. We want one more, one more good one. I think this is, oh, that was such a good fish too, guys. Wow. End of the line. You think I can make it under that? I think I can make it under that. I'm pretty sure I can make that. How do I do this though? Do I like lie on my back? Okay. Don't get stuck in a pipe. Don't get stuck in a pipe. closer to my face. We're almost there. It's getting kind of tight though. Oh little boy. And it's getting real close. Really close. Holy shit. The anchor's hitting. We're okay. Oh, that's a big spider. What is that? Woo. That was sketchy. My rod's still there? Yes. Whew. All right, guys. That does it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I had an absolute blast out here. I cannot believe that snook and the tarpon blowing up on the bait in the beginning, but we had to wait out that rain, but the perseverance paid off. We got into some nice fish and I can't, I have no complaints whatsoever. It just goes to show you that if you do a little exploration and look at some things that you may have overlooked in the past when you're looking for new fishing spots, 
it definitely could pay off like it did for me today. So I just wanna say thank you so much again. My name is Eric, this is the Flow Bass channel. Post new videos every week, so stay tuned and I will see you in that next video. Peace out. Yep, it's still there. He's still there. He's wrapped up in this pad. Oh, he's not huge.